list of like the, the girls, girls that sign up. For no, these. So you could ask them. There's a list. Oh. Sign up for what? For uh, for one on ones. For what, on Monday, on, after this period, I yeah, I, I coach for school. I told you this. School. The school pays to for life coaching sessions. Only Monday. Yeah. Did you sign up? Yes. <laughs> cool. Good. See, everybody needs to learn from Gabby. How to be responsible on time. Organize. No, Can I give you time? You are. It's bad. Can I give you time? So okay. We have an amazing class today, guys. So we're going to start jumping right in right now. Okay, ready? Okay. So what? This is our last class? No. Yeah, it is. I mean, no. 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 Are you going to Miami for Pesach? Oh. No. Nope. People only take it once. No oh, more Miami good. for me. No, why? Why? You're done. For a while. We have class on Wednesday. What? We have class on Wednesday. No. We, we have class on Wednesday, yeah. Wednesday. Okay, cool. Wait, we have really? class. Yeah. Nice. Guys, okay, so let's start. Tuesday? Um, no, Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, but I don't okay, know. Okay, here we go. We are up to Mida Vav. We are up to the sixth Mida. This Mida mm-hmm. is called, for he desires kindness. Okay, in Hebrew it's called, Ki chafetz chesed hu. Okay, again, I'm going to say this every single time we have Tomer Devorah. The whole point of Tomer Devorah is to learn how to interact with people like Hashem interacts with people. And what's, why do I have to interact like God interacts? Because for, for a lot of different reasons, okay? For the world, for, emulating Hashem. Right, emulating Hashem, becoming like Hashem. And what does Chazal tell us? What he is, you be. He's rachum, he's compassionate, you be compassionate. He's he's rachum, he's chanun, you be that. You be caring. You be you be forgiving, right? What God is, emulate Him, because we're human beings. We're created with the with the with the darkness in us. He doesn't have any darkness in Him. We have the darkness in us. What is the darkness in us? We have bad. It says yeter lev adam. Raminu Rav. The Yeter, the, the, what's the word Yeter in, in Hebrew, in English? Inclination. The, the push, the drive that we got from when we were little. Ra. We got dark. Like, you know, people, when they're jealous, when they want to make you fall on your face hard, when they want to, you know, get you, when they want to take revenge, that doesn't come from the light. That comes from the dark. That comes from dark energies. That comes from the dark. Now, if you look at the world today, you know, it says, this is what's amazing about what's going on. When I look at the news, everyone's like, oh my God, what's going on here? It's, it is. It's scary what's going on. It's, it's not scary. It's, it's big time. It's big time what's going on in the world. Those, all, the, all the marches and all the crazy and all the hatred and all the violence and all the destructive whatever that they're doing, vandalism and all that stuff, the, uh, the whatever they're called. Um, and... And you look at the world today, and it's exactly what it says in the Nebuos. It says in the Nebuos that before Mashiach comes, Hashem is going to do some a lot of sifting and sorting. And what are all our Jewish friends on Facebook and Instagram saying? Like, all our secular Jewish friends, like, I thought these were my friends. I thought these were women for women. Stand for the rights of women. So only Jewish women, they don't stand behind with all everything that's, you know. Are you guys following? Are you, do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. 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 So that's, that's basically the, that's the jargon that's going on today, right? Like a lot of Jewish people in, in Hollywood, right? What happened in Hollywood? That Jewish guy, the screen or whatever. Dan whatever. Schneider? Oh, the one who did a Holocaust movie. Yeah, the one who got the and through Jewish people under the bus and stood up in front of the entire world and told everyone that, yeah, with the bloody hands. So. What? Uh, you'll follow him up after. You'll follow him after. Basically, it, you'll find out after. So basically, what happens there is that you, then you had something like 1,200 Hollywood movie stars signing this petition against him and claiming their Jewishness, where a second beforehand they were totally assimilated and married to Gayim and and eating whatever and living totally secular lives. They happen to be, you know, they happen to be last name, I don't know, whatever, Cohen, but they're not. You know, that that never was a thing for them. All of a sudden, they're uniting. We're Jewish, Jewish pride, Jewish this, Jewish that. What's going on in the world? What does Hashem tell us in the Nebuos and the prophecies before Mashiach comes? There's going to be a lot of sifting and sorting. Sifting and sorting. Like when you go through stuff and you don't want it anymore. Like Pesach time. Do I want this? Do I not want this? Do I need this? Do I not need this? Let me throw this out. I don't, it's garbage. Receipts. Da, da, da. You're sifting and sorting through your bag. You're getting rid of garbage. You're getting things. Oh, this I need. This is my wallet. This is my stuff. Right? It's exactly what Hashem is doing. At the end of days. What is Hashem doing at the end of days? 
he's sifting and sorting, and all of a sudden you see who your neighbor is. You see who your friend is. You see who's who's on the light side, on the on the on the side of light, and you see who's on the side of darkness. You see who supports dark and terror and rape and beheadings and all because their hatred for for Jews is greater than their logic for humanity and for what's right. So you see the dark and you see the light. All of a sudden, it's turning into two camps. You see what I'm saying? Also here in Israel. Right? There's a lot of... There's what's going on right now. Up, up until October 7th, what was going on in the streets? Pro. No, what was going on in the streets of Israel? Massive amounts of marches. What was going on? Havganot, 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 against this, against... The, people were fighting the two different... Uh, one was pro this government, one was against this government. There was all this governmental talk that was going on. A year long of Havganot, of thousands and thousands and thousands of people that culminated in hating religion, hating religious people because they're on the right side, right? And religious people hating the... Not everyone, but hating the left, right? And all of a sudden, what happens on Yom Kippur? Breaking mechitos down, pulling tzitzis, killing each other in the streets of Israel, of Eretz Israel. What did that happen? Killing each other, meaning, God, yeah, hurting each other, beating the life out of each other. On Yom Kippur, in Tel Aviv, you know what I'm talking about, right before October 7th. Okay, so right before October 7th, and Yom Kippur, which is September, okay, it culminated a year worth of on the two sides and, and I was one in one of these rallies that happened I've just walked through one of them yeah, the, kind of crazy. There was uh, fires and violence and fires and, and hatred and, and killing and Jews Jews at each other's necks Jews at each other's necks anytime we've ever seen this in history and history will repeat itself and always does okay whenever we are at each other's necks what did the Hamas Hamas uh, people say that came in on October 7th the terrorists what did they say they knew no they knew to come in they knew to come in now. Why? Because everyone's at attention. Now's the perfect time to break through because you're not being like... Everyone's on watching each other, not even watching. Okay, that's one. What else? Like a bad time for the Jews. So oh, because we're not... Like it's we're divided the, the non-Jew knows it in, in his blood instinctively, like in his gut, he knows that when the Jewish people are at odds and we're at each other's necks, it's an amazing time. We are weak. We are on our knees. We don't have divine providence. Now is when we get them. Now is when we get them. When there's war amongst our camps, inside of, our, inside of ourselves, what happens is that we get weak. We get weak. We get weak because we're fighting one another. The Jewish Strength comes from our unity. Unity. When we are united, no one can touch us. And that's what we're talking about today. We want to talk about this specifically today because this Mida, I think from this whole all Torah Devor, this is my all time favorite. Okay? Just yes. Do you know about the, the seven day war, the six day war, there was like specifically a like particular unity? I don't know. I don't know. I don't mind this. I don't know. That I'm not good with uh, Israel history. Oh, I grew up in uh, Brooklyn. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't learn about the same thing more. My parents can tell you. Or you could look it up. Okay, so here we go. Here we go. For he desires kindness. Okay? So I'm going to read a little bit. And we're, I'm reading to you straight up from the Tomer Devora, from the actual Sefer. And then there's all the, the explanation in English and whatever. But this is the text from the Sefer. Okay? Here we go. He says like this. There's a known chamber in heaven. Okay, this is Kabbalah 101. There's a known chamber in heaven that angels that are appointed to receive the kind deeds that each person does in this world. There's a chamber, there's an olam in the olamos, okay, a place where the, all it's meant for is any kindness that any Jew does. There's an angel there, angels there, that are responsible for this place, meaning they are the kind angels, they are the angels that are on top of who does what kind in this world, okay, and that's their job, okay. When Hashem's attribute of justice, of din, raises accusations against the Jewish people, those angels immediately present these kind deeds and Hashem has mercy on the Jewish people. He desires kindness. Even if they are guilty, Hashem has mercy on them when they deal kindly with one another. Okay, this is the, this is the title of, write this down on your piece of paper, this is the title of this class, of, of, with this concept, and this is such an important concept, this is do so much for you in your life. You don't even know what this will do for you. I know you're so used to sitting here and learn, learning and whatever, whatever, whatever. But I promise you, this is a major game changer. So take some notes. Because when you write down, things go in. 
Okay, so the main concept here that we're saying is that when Hashem's Midas Hadin rises against the Jewish people, which means what? Which means that when the Jewish people are at each other's throat a lot, and there's a lot of Sinas Kinam, and there's a lot of Lashon Hara, and there's a lot of hatred, Hashem's Midas Hadin rises. What's the Midas Hadin? What's the Midas Hadin? Judgment. judgment. Okay? What we saw on October 7th was judgment. Okay? 1,200 people minimum, if it was, there's more. I mean, I think this number 1,200 is, is not true. I think it's more. I think, I remember seeing 1,400. Okay, I remember seeing 1,500. I don't know why it went down to 14, 1,200, which is the number everyone's saying today, but whatever. Okay? Dying, being killed, massacred in one day, that is not Rachamim. That is not compassion. That is not compassion. There is compassion within that because it was supposed to be what Hamas did on that day was because they couldn't handle it because they heard the music from the Nova Festival and they couldn't handle it and they had to do it because they're so bloodthirsty. Okay, but in essence, it came from Hashem because the real plan was that all the Arab countries around us together with Hamas inside of us were supposed to attack us on one day. That was the big miracle that happened here because Israel was not prepared for that at all. Israel was not prepared, but Hamas, they couldn't take it. They couldn't handle it. It was like the child that needs the ice cream bar and it's like right in front of him and he can't wait, he can't wait, he can't wait. Even though they're promising him like a whole birthday and all the candies in the world, but there's this candy right here and he needs it and he wants it now, like Asaph with the soup, right? I can't think of Olam Haba, the Bechorah, the, I want to eat. Take my Bechorah, take whatever I want to eat. That's where it comes from. It's like in the, in the impulsive need for darkness, okay? And we all have a little bit of that inside of us. That impulsive need to do something bad, to self-destruct, to we all have that little bit inside of us. Okay, that's the Amalek inside of us that we want to get rid of. Hold on one second. Let's just finish this idea. The idea is like this. When their justice, when the din, harsh judgment arises, it only arises when the Jewish people are at each other's necks. Now, I want to just say something before you ask your question. I don't know if you're up to date on current events, but the current events that are happening right now, 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 as in today and yesterday and the day before, is, first of all, have you noticed anything happening with, in terms of terror attacks? In Israel. No, it's not happening. Uh, Have you noticed anything happening? Calm down. Why they're having attacks? I mean, I I unfollowed everything. Okay, you don't know about Hashem. So far, unfollowed. It's too much for me. So let me let me give you some current events. Current events is over the last week. We have had numerous terror attacks. Yesterday, three people were stabbed in Gan Yavne. Okay, in the center of Gan Yavne. In the center, center, you were stabbed, and they're in a really, really bad situation. They're really mitzav kashe lotov. Okay, one second, there's no talking. Guys, we're, we're, I want you to not talk right now, okay? I want you to not talk right now. Okay, you'll discuss all these politics and all these things after. We were, we want to like go somewhere in this class. Okay, and we don't have so much time. We're always like, lachutz on the time. They give me like 45 minutes and by the time you guys get in here, oh, I'm Okay, so, so over the last week, there have been numerous amounts of terror attacks. Okay, yesterday morning, there was a terror attack in Beersheba. Yesterday night, there was a terror attack in Gan Yavna. The day before, there were terror attacks happening more and more and more. Now, on current events, on the, other, on the flip side, what's going on in, in, our, in Israel right now? Do you know? Tensions are rising very, very high because the, uh, the government has decided that they are taking all, they're cutting all funds from all the yeshivos, and every single guy that's sitting and learning has to put on a, a uniform and go to the army. Meanwhile, they have turned away 80,000 secular people that have wanted, Israelis, that have wanted to come and, and volunteer in the army, they've turned them away because they don't need them at this point. Right now they don't need them. But they have clo- they're have they closing down the yeshivos and they don't want to give the yeshivos and the rabbinim are, are fighting against them. They're saying they're going to take all their students o- o- to overseas. And it's like a whole thing. Now there are marches and marches, religious versus non-religious, non-religious, and there's a lot of non-religious people that are not into this that are not into making all the yeshiva bachim get up and go to the army, not into it. They want them to sit and learn. They believe in the Torah. They believe that they're working in one, on one area and the army's working in another area. And we need both as a Jewish people. Okay, but there are, there are, there are let's call them shapeshifters. Let's call them devils. Let's call them people that are um, Erev Rav, that are amongst the Jewish people that are inside of us that are creating a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of friction within the Jewish people. Because once we are at each other's necks, it's a no-brainer. It's a no-brainer. Why did Haman? Why why was Haman so excited about about Adar? Why was he so excited to kill the Jewish people? Why was he so excited to bring them to the party? He knows you weaken the Jewish people's morale. You weaken their strength. You weaken their spark. You weaken their neshama. It's a no-brainer. 
How many people are we in this world already? How many Jews are there? In the world? In the world? 2.2 of the world population. Yeah. 0.02 if anything, and? 2 billion. It's like 0.2 billion. 2 billion? 2 billion? No. No, it's more. 14. 14 point something million Jews in the entire world. In Israel, there are 6, six or 7 million Jews plus 2 million Arabs, but they're Arabs, they're not Jews. But there are 6, 7 million Jews in Israel, and the rest of the world, we have another some 7 million around the world. Seven, eight million around the world. That's it. That's the Jewish people. That's it. That's the whole thing. That's the whole kit and caboodle. And yet, all around the world, what's going on? Demonstrations, 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 demonstrations to wipe Israel off the map. This is very good news. You know why this is very good news? Because we're still here. Because we're heading towards Geula. Mamish. We're heading towards Geula like a roller coaster ride. We're, we're getting to the end. Okay? But. As the Jewish people, you have to know. That's why for every Jewish body that's in Aza, for every Jewish body that, but not person, not hostage, body, we give them back tons of terrorists for one body. The Jewish life, the Jewish spark, that's why Hashem says there's not going to be many of you. But the ones that are, they're going to be massive soul powerhouses in this world. That's why the Jews are the number one in everything. Why? Because even though we're few in number, what did uh, uh, Lord Jonathan Sachs say? I just saw the tal. What did he say on on, uh, on the video that I just said? Don't count the Jews. You can't count the Jews by number. You count them by contributions to the world. Based on how much they contribute, they, they contributed to the world, and we contributed. That's why they're saying we have to we have to uh, what's it called? Um, like not buy anything from uh, from Israel. What was it? Boycott. So everyone's saying, yeah, so boycott your phones and boycott your cars and boycott your bank account. Boycott everything. Your whole life boycott because it's all Jew made. Yeah. Our contributions have created and shifted this world. And yet we're so few in number. And that's exactly what Hashem says to us. Hashem says to us, what does Hashem say to us throughout the, the Torah? What does Hashem say? They're going to be few in number. But I'm going to count them like they're stars. I'm going to count them like, like, a, like, a, like, a, like someone counts diamonds. You count diamonds. Each diamond is wow. 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 The Jewish neshama, one Jew, one Jew in this world, one Jewish neshama, one Jewish person is fire and power. And that's why when a guy becomes a Jew, all of a sudden before he became a Jew, he had no Yetzirah. He didn't have a Jewish Yetzirah. He goes to the mikvah. He says, Shema Yisrael. He comes out of the mikvah. All of a sudden, tons of Yetzirah. Tons of Yitzhahara, because the Jewish person has Yitzhahara like the guy will never ever taste. Our Yitzhahara, our Yitzhahara is much, much, much stronger than any guy in this world. That's how Hashem created it. Because if you're so strong on one side, and you have so much capacity for light and potential and contribution, and shifting this entire world and making a dent on humanity, boy oh boy are you going to have a force on the other side that's going to pull you down. Boy, oh boy, that's going to want to get you confused, to get you off the beaten track, to get you to be busy with things that are, nah, and people in your life that are taking you away, taking you away from who you are, from where you're meant to go, from what you're meant to do, and they can be your bestest friends. But if they're taking you away from your mission, they're taking you away from your, 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 your power, and you're busy with all these dramas and these things and meanwhile you're not getting up for davening and meanwhile you're not going to class and meanwhile because you're so invested and you're so whatever that's Yitzhahara that's Yitzhahara and a, and a neshama that comes down to this world we are living in one of the most historical times that Jews have ever lived in the Gemara the Tanaim wrote they saw into the future and they saw the generation before Mashiach they saw us, they saw the neshamas and they said Wow, we would, we would never be able to live in that generation. We would never be able to do what they're doing, ever. As weak as we feel, as addicted as we feel, as dopamine-like uh, cravers as we feel, as distracted as we feel, as not smart and whatever as we feel, each one of us, each one of us was sent here, into our bodies, 
into this time, into this reality, into this exact time, because you, what we can do with, with us, just alone us, these 10, 12 girls in this classroom, what we can do in the world, the Yitzhahara, the Sitra Akra, the Satan, the haters, Amalek, uh, uh, ever, everyone that's against light, all the dark forces in the world, want to stop us in our tracks. So right now, we have what's going on in Israel right now, is the, uh, the anti-religious, trying to get the religious to go to the army. And there's all these fighting, and what's happening over the last few days? Terror attacks. Yes, so there were two. Terror attacks. Mm-hmm. Terror attacks. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, protest, like- I think yesterday or something like that. The protesters, they, we don't care about them. They're, they're, they're heir to us. It's just how Hashem is making a lot of noise in the world for Jewish world. Wake up! Wake up to your power. Wake up to your potential. Wake up to what you can do in this world. And what can we do in this world? This is what we're going to learn right now. This is what I want to leave you with before you go home for Pesach. Where did Gabby go? No, she can't leave. Probably, we'll probably the bathroom. She needs to be here. Come back. <laughs> Come here, give me your head, give me your head. I love this girl. I judged you for a second wrongly. No, I didn't judge you. I was like, go get her now. But you went to get me water. That's so sweet. Yeah, she is. Yeah, now we're doing this. Okay, ready? Here we go. Listen to this. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Ready? This is how it goes. This is what's happening behind the scenes. This is what's happening behind the curtains. And this is what we're supposed to do as the Jewish people in this world today. You want to make a difference in the world? You want to stop the, the noise that Hashem is creating with all these pro Palestinians? Okay? You want to Because it's all noise, 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 noise. What is Hashem doing? It's an alarm clock. When it's time to wake up, because Mashiach is here, because Mashiach wants to be revealed, because he's here already in Eretz Yisrael, and all the Gedolim are saying that, okay, then there's some, there has to be an alarm clock. There's an alarm clock. And it says, it says, that when the guy stands up and screams at the Jew, Jew, okay, that's when the Jew needs to wake up. That's when the Jew needs to wake up. When the, when the guy stands up and starts screaming Jew, that's Hashem's message to us. What do you mean by wake up? Wake up, wake up, girl. Wake up to your power. Wake up to your strength. Wake up to what you can do in your life to make your life a better life and the people around you. Wake up from this lala, dreamland, uh, lazy, not sure, broken, sad, tired, distracted, alone, all our, all our victimness and our, and our, wake up. You're a dream. An hour of your time in the hospital, an hour of those eyes looking at people that are sick in the hospital, you don't even know what you're creating, what you're doing to save the Jewish people. But instead, the Yitzhar keeps us on our couch. He didn't text me back. I wonder where she went on vacation. (laughs) Keep them dumb, keep them numb, keep them dumb and stupid. You got them. You got them. That's it. Because when the person wakes up to their power, when a person wakes up, you know what I could do in an hour? You know what we could do here in an hour, what we're doing here in an hour? For the Jewish people, for real? That's, that's, why, that's why we have to wake up to our strength and our kindness. So here's, 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 the, here's the message, okay? Here's the message, okay. There are angels in heaven whose job is to guard the merits of acts of kindness we have performed. We said this. When the attribute of strict judgment raises against, raises accusations against us, those angels stand before Hashem, bearing in their hands the kind deeds we have done. Which means, when Hashem is looking down and now seeing all this stuff, stuff that's going on, right? Everyone, is, everyone in the media, everyone on social media is screaming, what are you doing? We did this already. We had rallies. We had, we had marches. We were at each other's necks. And then we got October 7th. Don't do this again. Don't do this again. Now they're trying to get all Who's these shoes. The government. The government. The people. There are people in the government that are Pasha dark. They are here from the inside to take us down. And us, us, the people here, like we're, we're, we're the Jewish people, until we realize that it's in our hands and it's not in the government hands and we're the ones that can fight this war and we're the ones that can bring, back, bring down the darkness in this world and that's what the Jewish people are meant to do, to be an or la goyim. We're supposed to be the light onto the nations. The only way to create light in all of this darkness is to turn our lights on and not wait for the government to make order. And the, 
There's no, there's, there's, it's, it's puppets. It's all puppets. It's all in Hashem's hands. Hashem is only making it tighter and squeezing us tighter and making it tighter for us to say, yeah, I gotta do something. I can't keep sleeping. I can't keep numbing myself. I can't keep numbing myself with all these little distractions and the dramas or, or whatever, or the, 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 the depression or like, eh, and I was, eh. We all went through trauma. We've all gone through really hard things. The idea is to talk about your trauma, to feel your pain, like I said in every single other class, and move on and connect to your strength. So how, does he, how do you do that? So here's what he says. He says, when the attribute of strict judgment arises against us, the angels come before Hashem, and this is what's going on in Shemayim right this second, and we're helping them right this second. The angels come before Hashem and they say, wait, 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 stop. Look, look. You say, uh, this person did a favor, a favor for their neighbor. A drink, uh, they give a drink to someone who was thirsty. Food for the hungry. Here's a helping hand, a caring ear, a shoulder to lean on. Here was a favor. He, he gave him a loan. Any kindness that we do with each other is literally a blockade from the Yetzirah to hurt us. The Yetzirah, I'm talking about the Malach HaMavit, I'm talking about the destructive forces in the world. I'm talking about, well, how do they look? What do they manifest as? What do they shapeshift into? Huh? Terrorists. What do they shapeshift into? pro palestinian demonstrators. What do they shapeshift into? People on the inside that are Arab, rather, and trying to destroy the Jewish people from the inside. What are all of our, our darknesses, our averos, our hatred towards one another, our stupidity that we're involved in? What does that turn into? That turns into terrorists and terrorist uh, bombings and all the things that they do and the stabbings and, and all the things that they do. That's what it turns into. What stops it? What blockades it? What blockades it? Kindness. 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 Now I want to take you, I'm going to read a few things to you that I highlighted here, and then I want to show you examples of people that were literally Rishayim. They were Rishayim. They didn't Davin, they didn't Chabis, they didn't Tznias, they didn't nothing. And, but, kind. They were kind. They were kind. From the Torah? From the Torah. They were kind. They worshipped the Vodah Zara. They were kind. Their homes were open. They cared about other people. Do you need a seat? Do you want a cup of water? Can I help you? They were kind. Kindness, kindness, my friends. Kindness, my friends, is what we need right now, 24-7, 24-7, because the Jewish people are under attack all around the world, inside Israel, and everywhere a Jew exists in this world, he's, there's a threat on him at the, at, the, at the moment. And why is that happening? Not because of all these people. These people don't exist. The government doesn't exist. These, these, pal- these Arabs, these terrorists, these pro-Arabs, these pro-terrorism, they don't exist. Well, how, would they, how are they here? How are they manifested? How? By our hatred towards one another. By our Russian horror towards one another. By people wanting people cheating on each other, having affairs in the Jewish world. By people doing things, all the darkness inside of us, letting it crawl out of us and hurt each other. That's how they manifest these... Ow! <laughs> Thank you, Hashem. Thank you, Hashem. Thank you, Hashem. Thank you, Hashem. Hold on, the pain is still real. One second. Thank you, thank you, thank you. How does this... Oh, do you see my face? Is it red? No. Oh, good. I keep composure when I get hurt. Okay, so... So, so it's very, very simple. It's very simple. We have to simplify, 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 simplify. Jewish brains overcomplicate. We're, we're obsessed with complications. Simplify. We need to save the boat, and we will save the boat. And Mashiach will come and save humanity. Okay? Amen. That's what it's going to look like. No, 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 amen. It's happening. It's going to happen. It says in the Nebuah, every other Nebuah that happened in the Torah, happened. But well, what do you mean that Gedolim said already that the Mashiach is here? What? Gedolim, uh, Mashiach is here. We just, he just needs to be revealed. The only way for him to be revealed he's is by here? the... Here, here, here. He's here. He's like born person. already, developed already, walking, talking. He's here. Uh, he's a person? Place. He's a person? Yeah, of course. What of course, the Mashiach is the person. What does it mean? What if it's me? What if you're married? It's right. not you. It's not you. Uh, <laughs> it's not you. Sorry, <laughs> Gabby. Who is it, Rabbi? What if it's Rabbi Sina? <laughs> Hold on, guys. We'll talk about Mashiach and who he is. We can't, we can't know who he is. We can't know who he is. There's a few. Um, there are a few like. Gabby, <laughs> that was crazy. It doesn't matter who he is right now. You know who he is. You know who he is? Bless you. 
Yeah. 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 Yeah.
What if I know someone that always sees like Arabs and curses them out? <laughs> we'll talk about it after. No, but we I literally heal their, their head first and we'll get out to over seven. You feel out right? No. No, there are halachas for different levels of people like that. Okay? But in terms of being a Jew, in terms of being a Jew, a Jewish person, we are the first ones, and I said this to you a few times, around the world, whenever there's any kind of problem anywhere, the Jewish people are there first. Israel sends people there first. We send Hatzalah and Zaka and everything to, 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 to non-Jewish things. Okay, it's not Jewish things. Not like when there was that thing, the terrorist attack in Pittsburgh, and we sent Hatzala there. I'm not talking about in in the Jewish synagogue. I'm talking mm. about when there's tsunamis in Thailand mm. or whatever. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, we're the first ones on the scene. Why? Because the Jewish people are supposed to be leaders in kindness, leaders in innovation to make the world a better place. Why? Because we're all light. And the more we drive out the darkness from inside of us, from within us, the more the brighter the light will be. The brighter the light is, what happens to darkness in the face of light? Mel- melts, it disappears, it ceases to exist. There is no dark when there's light. The stronger you burn your light, the stronger you shine your light, the more the dark goes down. How do you shine your light? By being a Jew. How do you be a Jew? By being kind. Where do you go to kindness? Wherever you can go, you be kind. Wherever you can be kind, you be kind. Don't be kind with people that you know are narcissistic, people that you know are going to just take and take and take and take and take and take and it's never enough for them. There you have to draw a boundary, you have to put down your, your, your foot. But understand the magnitude of what it means for a Yid to be in the position of giving. Understand what that means. You want to be a soldier in the army? Go give. Go give. Go give out. Go give. Go, go give. Go. You know that there's in uh, there's a few a few um, uh, what's it called betitomim? How do you say betitomim? Orphanages all over Jerusalem with little kids that have no parents. Go volunteer for for twenty minutes. Go hang out with them on their beds if that's possible. And or in the not in their beds doesn't sound so good. And like whatever. I was just thinking of a of a, <laughs> I was just thinking of an orphan that. I once saw with a friend of mine, and, and he got a guitar from him, and he was playing, and they were sitting on the bed, and the orphan was playing the guitar, and he was so happy. That's why I, that's why I said bed, but I didn't mean that. Anyway, go play soccer with them, or go give, get them ice cream, or whatever it is. What that does, when we do for one another, it creates a bright light, and no darkness in the world can, can touch us. Nothing. Even if we're not doing mitzvahs. You understand that, right? <coughs> Even if your elbows are not covered. You understand that, right? That's what's going to bring the Gula. Listen to this. What bearing do these good traits have on the injustice we suffered from them? People did something bad to you. Your friend spoke really nasty to you. Okay? Your sister. Your sister. Your best friend. People that are supposed to be on your side, in your, in your life, that care about you. All of a sudden, they... Ugh, 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 actions that are like n- below the belt. Mean, not nice, mother, brother, friend, whatever. Okay? What's our natural reaction to that? Okay, and well, then what do you do? Oftentimes you distance yourself. Oftentimes you naturally take a step back. Ah, that's what you are? So bye bye. Mm. Okay? Oftentimes when a person hurts you and hurts you and hurts you and says mean things to you and puts you down, you want to take a step back from them, right? Yeah? So what is what are we learning in this chapter? This is what we're learning in this in this thing. Listen to this, girls. This is what's so amazing about Hashem because mm-hmm. it's all not black and white in Hashem's. Like it's not black and white in Hashem's ways of interacting interacting with us. Why? It says here. Here. How can a human being be expected to keep going above and beyond the dictates of fairness, to keep giving and forgiving, and to remain silent in the face of insult. Someone insulted you. You're supposed to be nice to this person. Someone's supposed to be nice to this person. It says, listen to this. No Jew who does not have some, there's no Jew that does not have some good character trait. Rather than focusing on the other person's faults or the damage they have done to us, mm-hmm. let us focus on the good they have done in their lives. Look at their good traits and their positive side. How many good things have this person done in their lives or to you? Let's look at the big picture. When we look at the big picture, 
of what this person, again, again, I'm not talking about people that are energy suckers, are coming to block mm-hmm. you, or narcissists, have some kind of personality disorder that are really, really pulling you down. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about people, family members, whatever, people that are in your life could be also narcissists, but whatever, okay? People that you fight with, regular people, not everyone's a narcissist, you fight with someone, and you get offended. He says, the way to be like Hashem in this position is to remember the good this person has done for you in your life, also the good they have done for you, also the times they were there for you. One second. Focus on that. Focus on that. Focus on that. And forgive them. He says, why? And listen to this. He says, what, what good does it do to think of the good that the person that has this injustice against me, that caused me suffering, what does it do good? How does that do good? He says, nothing. It doesn't. But such is the way of Hashem. What does he say? He forgives our sins against him because of the kindness we, we do with one another. Hashem forgives the sins you sin against him. Okay? Your lack of tzniyas, your lack of all the things that you sin against God, Shabbos, all those things. But in the Malakum, he forgives it when you're, nice to, when you're nice to someone else. When you're kind to someone else. When you forgive somebody else. Yeah. Like, what if I have a friend and she some she has like a lot of anger and sometimes just comes out and then in the back of my head I think like no she's a good person no like I think about like all the good moments but whenever I'm like whenever she's upset at me I'm saying like the opposite I don't get the same back so it's kind of hurts and also like let's say whenever I'm married and like my husband does something I yeah. think of the good and then whenever and then and then whenever it's gonna be um. Not. Hopefully he will. And that's exactly what he says here. If a father will always remember the positive qualities of his son, and a husband, those of his wife, or a wife, those of her husband, it takes the sting out of the argument. This is a training ground. This is a training ground to understand. He says, it says, the Medrash says, do not throw a stone, this is what we were saying before, into a well from which you drink. Don't throw a stone into a well which you drink. Did the well mean to do us any favors? Does the well feel offended if someone throws a rock in it? Of course not. Still, we must train ourselves to show honor and appreciation to those who we have benefited from, regardless of all of the considerations. If you have benefited from your sister at some point, if she, was, she had your back, if you had, this friend had your back, if people, and you know that these people also have flaws, because we're also, we also have darkness in us, we also have yatar, we also get angry, we also, we also want to punish, we also get hurt, we also have all these things. The idea of this chapter is to remember to create kindness in your life. How do you create kindness? Okay, how do you create kindness? By learning to focus on what they do do good also. And not having to do this eye for an eye kind of reaction. Oh, they did back to me? Okay, they're right back. Oh, she asked me for a favor before she hurt my feelings? I'm not doing that favor for her, no way. Do the favor. Because if this person, if you have a history with this person, and this person has done good, has done good, has shown up, has had your back, has, has, and you know that they also have krizot. They also get angry, they also flap, they also have issues, they are emotional, emotional things. Okay? The idea is to focus on the good of them, okay, and to see where they've done good, and to still be the bitter man. Better man! She's heard you after she asked you a favor, you could still call her up and say, you needed that favor tomorrow. Where am I picking it up? Where am I dropping it off? You don't have to be besties now. But you can still be the better, better man, and that creates a super shield on the Jewish people against all this darkness that's going on around us. And inside of us. And each one of you, don't think, who am I, who am I, who am I? We're only 14 million people in the whole world. So you, statistically, are, are like, in terms of, like, how many people, like, in terms of Goyim, one Jew per what you can do in your life. And what you were created to do in your life. Yeah, go create, go do, go spread kindness. Small things, little things, people that you got into a fight with, pick up the phone, call them. If, or text them. You. No, so be smart about it, okay? Be smart about it. And and don't be like, oh, don't be all like, you know, like like this, no. like, what? Holier than thou. Holier than thou or make yourself into a welcoming mat. Neither of that. Be normal. And if they don't want to forgive you, so so, so that's, not, that's okay. Dive for them that they should forgive people in their hearts. Because the more we forgive and the more kind we are and the more kindness we spread, the more we are protecting the Jewish people and bringing Mashiach and saving Saving us in an hour where we need to be saved. Because uh, what's going on in the streets, it's a lot, a lot, a lot of fighting. A lot of people at each other's necks. 
It's the ones that are sitting in the seminary, in the shiva, that you are privileged. You have been the privileged ones amongst the privileged nation, okay, to be sitting here and to be absorbing Torah. You have a big, big responsibility on your shoulders. We have a big responsibility on our shoulders. We're not on the front lines. Girls your age are serving in the army. If you're here, you better be doing things. You better be going to volunteer, doing, helping, watching your speech. Because it's the speech, it's Lashon Hara, the Sin of Schinam, and the loving of one another, and the kindness to one another is that's protecting our, our country and protecting our people. That's what's protecting. And if they're going out and sitting all day out, uh, waiting, sitting, guarding for days on end, and that's their life, and sometimes they don't, they go, they don't shower for, for, for four, five, six a week, then you better, especially since you're sitting here in the lap of, uh, of, of, of Torah and ease and food is being catered to you and, and everything, better be out there saving the Jewish people. Thank you. No pressure.